hand show. They just released this a few weeks ago. And this 9 inch is not your typical 9 inch. This is a brand new version 2.0 that comes with the harness for your AMD and Intel. So it works for both. And it's very easy to install. You don't have to run it to the 12 volt battery or anything like that. It comes with all the tools you need with the exception of the fillet screwdriver. So you do get two pry tool. The device itself, very nice. Smaller bezel, meaning you have a smaller profile device that allows more airflow. And the screen actually wraps around just like an iPhone, iPhone 12, for example, very clean look. And it comes with two harness, so make sure you select the right harness for Intel or AMD. Two plug, red and blue. That is it. You do have a piggy wire tail attached here, so you can attach other handshow device in the future. So we are here installing this new 9-inch display, and we will have it next to the mini display so you can see the differences and how it looks. So with the mini display, it's a great display. It doesn't block any airflow, but we will show you something unique about this 9-inch. So now we'll be removing the dash. That's the first step you want to do is remove the trim on each of the sides. So just to replicate what we just did, we remove that trim using the pry tool. And then you lift up the actual dash from the silver lining area and you start between the driver's side and the passenger side. So just using your pry tool, it will pop right open. Once you remove the dash, go ahead and grab the actual display itself. And up next, you want to remove this plastic panel, the small plastic panel. To do this, you need to remove this rubber trim, put it to the side and go ahead and clip that open. Then you need to remove this door sill inner trim. So this is the inner trim panel. Again, we are here at Test Studio doing this installation. So we are giving you both of the view of this nine inch as well as how the installation works here. So you want to start counting from the first opening hole, 30 and thir 31, 32, depending where your position you like it. So you want to place this 32 and 35 with the opening. So follow the manual, but then do a test run, count it multiple times, and then place it on the actual dash itself to see if it actually positioned itself in the right orientation for your point of view. And after you feel comfortable with everything, you will go ahead and tighten that up with the clamp on the back. But right now we're doing a test run. So the manual actually said, put it at 32, 34. But as you can see here, the wire is slightly different. So make sure you double check because the old version, the hole opening for the wires to come through the device is slightly different. So the version 2.0, you have to adjust it accordingly. So that's something to keep in mind, but the manual should be updated when you do order this. So we did get the demo version and that's why we are just trying to work off the old manual. But once you order, you should have the latest version to be able to identify the correct hole opening to run the wires through. You can see there the display, smaller bezel, looks absolutely amazing. So here's the breakthrough. This actually comes with a vent diffuser to help with the airflow hitting your face. So for those that have the previous display, this will be a game changer. So this diffuser can actually be turned on and off, but now you can actually get air back into your face. So let's go ahead and get this display installed. So you want to run the wires, blue and red, through those two openings on the left and right side and place this aluminum backing behind your dash. This is where you will be screwing in the six Phillips screw and they are six Phillips screws so make sure you screw all of them in if you are missing one or two don't worry two should be sufficient but let's go ahead and follow the manual so we'll start from end to end and this requires a small Phillips screwdriver don't over torque this once you feel some tension go ahead and stop if you over tighten you can potentially strip the plastic Okay, so we got all six screws on, and now we're getting the display back on the vehicle. But before you do, place the wire that connects to the display 
along the dash, run it down, you ha have enough length to reach the plug, then go ahead and move your dash in. This is a critical part here where when you place the dash on, ensure that your wires are not pinched with any clip on the dash itself or where the dash attached to the vehicle. This is an important step because if you don't connect these two wires correctly, the display won't work. So red goes to red, blue goes to blue, but there is a small arrow pointing at each other. Make sure they line up correctly. Do not force these plugs together with any force that could potentially damage the plug. You want to do this as lightly and gently as possible. If it doesn't fit properly, pull it back out and line it back up. Once you have the plug connected, line up the dash. This is where you want to get a flashlight if you have one. If you don't, then hopefully you have enough light to be able to see where the dash connect to the vehicle and make sure those wires are not lined up where your clips are. That potentially will pinch your wires and possibly cutting your wires, making your display non-functional. So if you make that mistake, that is your responsibility to ensure those wires are clear of any obstacle. You can of course use electrical tape to tape it down that is highly suggested. If you don't have electrical tape, then this is what you have to go through. Make sure those wires are not pinching. Once you have the dash down, go ahead and connect the blue wire into the AMD plug. So the Intel is only one plug next to the autopilot computer. There's a white clip there that you see. You can leave that clip alone. That is to piggy tail any other future device that you attach. Then you have a smaller white wire connector. This goes next to the A pillar. So next to your foot well. Let me zoom in here. So this is a U loop you see there. You take out the OEM plug, plug in the hand show plug, and then loop back to the hand show wire. And that is it. You're done with the installation. Now just zip tie everything down. The zip tie does not come with the kit, so if you have zip tie, it's ideal if you zip tie those wires down to the side. Just a quick look at the display, it is working now. So you do not need to turn off any power, but you could under safety. And then now just cut off the axis zip tie. And if you have the Intel vehicle, you need to use the other harness. You will be plugging into the computer underneath the glove box behind that cover you took off earlier. It is the second plug from the bottom. So you unplug the Tesla plug, plug in the handshell display and replug the Tesla to the handshell harness. That is it. And make sure you turn off your vehicle under safety, power off before you do this. You have about five minutes. Go ahead and do everything in reverse with putting the trims back, including all the clips, the two clips that you removed earlier. This is for the carpet trim. There is one clip that we removed earlier. And then you will now be placing back the door sill inner trim. So let's go ahead and get into that position on the passenger side so you can have a better view. But this is it for the installation. So everything takes less than 30 minutes. We did notice a loose bolt here. So we'll tighten that up, but that's not required for this installation. So here is the inner door sill the L shape, we are placing this back. Once you line it up to the clip, you can go ahead and press it down. You will hear a couple clips. And there's one clamp that you need to put back here as well. Line that up and make sure it's with the trim and the carpet, nothing is bulging and go ahead and place that clip back. And now put that cap back on the one that you took off earlier by removing the rubber trim you slide the bottom in first and you press in and with that put back the rubber trim and now connect your ambient lighting 
to the bottom panel that you took out earlier. This is the bottom vent panel. It does not have any airbag, so don't worry about that. That is the top panel. You're not removing that piece. So this requires a three clip. This is where you remove when you replace your cabin filter. So place that back. You do need to line this up. There's a little opening on the top left. So a flashlight here will be helpful. And once you have it lined up, press it up and push back all the clip. So let's get back to this actual vent diffuser. So this vent diffuser is placed between your display and where your air vent comes out. As you can see there, it sits flush. It's not visible to anyone and you will have more airflow. So this is a huge game changer. This only works with the nine inch new display because it is a smaller profile with smaller bezel. So it's able to get the air right around the display itself, giving you some air directed towards your body. And in comparison, that's the mini display from Handshow. You can see how much bigger it is. It does not block airflow at all from the mini display. This nine inch display, it does block some, but now you have that diffuser and a smaller profile. It also has better resolution. It has better functionality. It's more snappier, better processor. It has over the air update. So you no longer you need a micro SD to update this display. And the best part is you have our Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you have better airflow. You have a better display It's more functional with faster processor. Overall, it just looks a lot better. It actually looks better than the Tesla display itself. It even has smaller bezel. So if you're interested in this, check them out. Link in the description. Make sure you use the promo code to get that discount. If you don't use that promo code in the description, you'll be paying full price. So make sure you enter that in that checkout. Catch you all next time. Remember to subscribe. Hopefully you find this video helpful.